Hello YouTubers, this is a new session in the standard universal series where I get to uh, kind of show you how you can implement the standard, the engineering standard in different languages from everywhere around the world. Um, today I'm going to show you how to implement the concepts and the ideas and the patterns of the standard in Java. Java is one of the oldest object-oriented programming languages. I think it was born in 1995 by an amazing person. His name was James Gosling. Uh, he's a very smart Canadian uh, uh, software engineering scientist. And, uh, you know, he, he worked everywhere, starting from Sun Microsystems to Oracle to Amazon to Google. He, he worked everywhere, right? And he... Uh, 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 he has some amazing ideas about what the JVM is and how to design it. You know, there's some 200 engineers. The last time I heard, there's about 200 engineers that are maintaining what the, GM, the JVM is around the world. A lot of companies started to take on to Java and, you know, build their own open version of Java, even Microsoft, like OpenJDK. You know, Java is one of these uh, programming languages that everyone tried to kill. You know, and it's still alive. That's how solid and strong the language is. And you still kind of in the global rank of things, you still see Java kind of really kicking some serious ass no matter where it goes. You know, people are still interested in Java. So programming languages worldwide rank. You know, there is a whole bunch of, you know, you'll see Java always coming in and fighting its way you know, up there. And it's it's been up there for a very long time. Like regardless of, you know, how the uh how much people are trying to stay away from Java, some people call it verbose, some people call it, you know, uh, a little bit too much work and all that kind of stuff. It's still out there, still fighting, still kind of maintaining its position right with Python, JavaScript and other programming languages. Okay, but Java, Java is very interesting. Before I start kind of talking to you about how to implement, you know, a, a, a certain system, you know, in, in Java, let me just, for people who are coming from a J, Java background and they don't know what the standard is, what the engineering standard is, uh, the standard is this theory that basically says every system out there can be broken into three components. These components are brokers and services and exposers. Exposers can be UI, it can be API controllers, gRPC, whatever you want to call it. You know, every system in the world is like that. There's a, a book about it, an open source book that you can go and see. You know, I'll drop the link in the in the description of this video that talks about this theory, the try nature of everything theory and how you can break, you know, your software into these smaller components. How do you test them? When do you test them? You know, what kind of coverage do you need to have on them? And so many different little details, you know, that can make your uh, engineering life much more excitable. Uh, much more interesting, makes you very happy and not have to run into a lot of trouble, you know, trying to solve complex problems. Okay, so there's this thing called the standard, right? And the standard universal is to allow you to apply the same concepts of the standard, the engineering standard, onto uh, uh, the, uh, the programming language of your choice, right? So it can be any programming language. So far, we, we did this in so many uh, different languages, but I'm continuing like so far we have Go, Scala, R, and Kotlin, right? Um, uh, the standard itself is translated into so many different languages. Some of these are still in progress. You know, people are still working on it. You'll see it in every language you can imagine. You'll see a lot of good translations out there. There's a French translations. You know, Mabruk, uh, my dear brother, is working on it, pushing through. A lot of amazing things are going on there. Okay, so... The, mo the most important thing is the standard itself, right? The try nature, understanding how to purpose file your systems, you know, where does it come from? How does it influence? How is it very heavily influ influenced by nature and so, and, also, and so on and so forth? How do you write a Java system according to the standard, right? How do you write a Java system that kind of complies with the patterns and the systems uh, in the standard? I'm going to uh, start IntelliJ here. I'm going to create a new project. Here's IntelliJ, I think. Can I do this? <laughs> so, okay, well, here's a bug. You know, uh, if you if you resize your screen, you're going to have to start IntelliJ over. But again, also, I'm using IntelliJ 2021, so I need to also get a little bit with the times and, and do something. Okay, so here's a new project, and then I'm going to choose Groovy. And... Um, 
there's Groovy, there's there's Maven, there's all these different things, different versions of of, of uh, uh, kind of you know supportive systems and packages for for Java. I'm gonna go and say standard Java, and let's create a simple Java program that complies with the standard. So here's your source. I'm gonna go and start. Like I said, broker. So this is a very simple system that kind of shows you, you know, how to build, you know, a standard compliance system. So I'm gonna go and say, well, first, first of all, I want model students because this is all where it starts from modeling, you know, purposing modeling and simulation. We talked about the purpose of this program to show you how to implement it according to the standard. Let's start building some models. Uh, Java, by the way, for people who are coming from C# -sharp background, it's basically, it's basically the, like I always say, Java is 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 C# -sharp's mother, basically. It influences C# -sharp. like even the people that work on Java today, like Mads and all these folks at Microsoft, they're very heavily coming from a Java background. Okay, I want a a just an ID like this and I want a name so here is my Java properties right so it's just as simple as that and then I want to go build my um, uh, broker so brokers dot storages you basically specify the, the category and then you build you know the actual system here's an interface I'm gonna use some C sharp uh, language so I'm gonna speak Java with a little bit of C sharp accent here because there isn't really a good um, standard in terms of naming conventions that I could actually uh, rely on some people use impel like implementation uh, some folks say you know uh, iterable you know stuff like that it's just quite um, not not quite the language that I want to use when I build my program. If I'm doing Java on daily basis, I would definitely go change these naming conventions because they they don't quite kind of they don't they're not simple and easy. And maybe this is just my bias because I've been doing C# -sharp for 22 years, so this is also very possible. So I'm gonna go ahead and say I want a function called insert student. So here's pretty much just like C# -sharp. insert student. Here's an interface. And then I want to go and create a concrete class. So it is my storage broker. And my storage broker will implement. So implements I storage broker like that. Great. If you do Alt Enter in IntelliJ, we'll go and implement that function for you. Beautiful. So far, so good. I don't see. I, I don't like this verbosity. And that's the problem that people write kind of a lot of people don't like about Java. There's just too much stuff going on. Too much verbosity going on. I don't want to see this. You know, this is this seems like an afterthought to express something that's going on with a certain a, 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 a structure or a certain implementation, right? So in C sharp, you'll see something like override, like here. But I'm not really overriding anything. Like even the language here, you're overriding when you are when there is an existing implementation and you're overriding this implementation. Right, but in here I'm not o really overriding. I'm just implementing. There is no implementation for this function. So, as you can see here, like one of the reasons why people kind of frustrated with Java in certain ways. But hey, it's still alive, it's still kicking, no problem there. Okay, let's go create the service itself. So there's a package. So services dot students, and then on there I want my uh, uh, my my interface. So here's interface i student service. And then in this I student service, I want a student. Watch, watch the language in here. So add student in here, not insert, because every every realm has its own language. So here is a student right here. And then I want to create the concrete class for this. So here's my student service, just like that. And this guy implements implements uh, I student service, which means I can go and do this. But this guy has a constructor, right? So this is student service that will take in uh, I storage broker uh, as a an input. It would be nice if we could fat arrow this. I don't know where Java stands on this, but it feels a lot like C sharp. It's basically C sharp. Uh, here's I storage broker. My storage broker has to be private class member. And then I'm going to go here and say storage broker equals storage broker. So I made my assignment right here. No problem, right? But this is intentionally left unimplemented. How do you do this in Java? You basically go and say throw new not 
uh, not implemented. There's not implemented, but it's uh, it's not the one that the Java folks like. They they have a, <laughs> a illegal operation or something like that. Illegal operation or operation not supported exception, something like that. Right? It'd be nice if we could just get like you know something nicer than this, but I don't know. That's what people what people do. Here's something that. I really, really, really am jealous of, and I really appreciate about Java, which a lot of programming, other programming languages just decided to ditch, right? Engineers are really, really lazy and slow and crappy about documenting code. And I can't tell you how many times I had to go and dig and debug, you know, my dependencies and try to throw uh, different things at them just to see whether I can just simply basically find out what are the potential possible exceptions that could come out of a dependency. Why is that important? Because in the standard, a dependency can either be a validation or a dependency or an, a service exception, which one of these three kind of dictates the level of reaction towards that exception. If it's validation, it's the user fault. If it's a dependency validation, it's still the user fault. If it's a dependency or a service, it's our fault. So it kind of determines whether you need to wake up in the morning and go fix a system versus, oh, this is just, you know, a, uh, what is it, 10D, 1T, something like that, you know, just the, or, or uh, the problem is between the keyboard and the, and the chair, basically. So uh, what Java does, which I really, really love, is that they go and do this stuff. And for the longest of time, you know, a lot of people would go and say, hey, that looks actually ugly. No, it doesn't, because now I can read the signature of this method, and I know exactly what kind of exceptions uh, this method is throwing without having to dig deeper into the code. Like, imagine this code is calling a different dependency, and this dependency is throwing an exception, and so on and so forth. Java knows how to support that and tell you exactly, hey, heads up, this method will throw these types of exceptions. That's something we totally need. You know, that's something that's code documentation is the best documentation because you don't have to go update it. What's written is what works and what works is what's written. It's perfect. OK, so this is here, you know, so far, so good. This is test driven. We're making sure things are working proper. You know, I don't know why it throws uh, spaces in here or new lines between, you know, uh, imports. But this is basically what we have. OK. Now I need to test drive this. I need to write a test that fails when I try to call the storage broker or try to call this dependency. Let's do this. First of all, I need to uh, create a new project in here. I'm just going to call it test. Not module, I'm just going to call it tests. Here's a new directory. I'm going to call it tests like that. This test here is not really configured yet to be a a, a test project. Normally they get a little bit of a green color or something like that. However, you know, IntelliJ likes to do their thing, right? Can I kind of configure, let me go here and say, uh, we need we need to configure the modules for this project. Well, I could first kind of search through uh, the system to see if I can make this or mark this as so let's see, mark directory as, yeah, there it is. So this here, mark directory as, and then I'm just going to say, this is the tests. Great. Now that I have this, I can go here and say, well, underneath that, I'm going to go and say services.students. Great. And then I'm going to go and create a new class. Right, or I can actually, even better, I can hover over this guy, do alt enter, and I say create tests. Look how cool this is. So you're basically going over the service itself and you say, go generate some tests for me. That's pretty cool. And I can select the method name and I go and, I go and say, okay, put it all over here and then go ahead and build me that test right there. Right now, here's the problem. Now I don't have this J unit yet. I need to pull that guy in. How do we do that? So there's this cool uh, module thing that we can do here. Open module settings. And there is the project uh, libraries, and then I can go here and add from Maven something called Makito-all. Uh, 
Makito dash all is basically gonna go look for all. This is basically your equivalent of NuGet packages, right? It'll go find, you know, the one that you want, and then it will go and say, go ahead and and get give me that. So here we go. Apply. Okay. Does that work? J unit. Add J unit five. Just clicking buttons until something works. Okay, so I added Makito here because I want to mock things. And this is how you basically mark your test. Can't judge them in here because in C sharp we go and say fact or you know test or whatever, MS test or whatever the case may be. So no judgment here. Uh, but what we can do is that we can start writing our, our, uh, our test. So I'm going to go ahead and say should add students. There you go. And here's a given, here's a when, here's a then. I'm going to mock a student, so here's a student. Oops, student. Uh, student mock. Equal mock. So here's one that I don't like really, student.class, you have to do this. And that's that's just weird. You know, I like how other languages that we worked with could just do that for you, like automatically you just go and say, I think it was... It was either Scala, you know, but also I think also uh, Kotlin. You could just go and say mock student, and that's it. Clean, beautiful. This dot class thing is is a little weird. Okay, student input student. We create uh, similar parameters with the exact same names because they need to fit the context where you use them, right? So wherever you're using this variable. It needs to kind of make sense in terms of language. Like you can't go and say returns input student. Nope. It needs to return the inserted student, which is whatever got inserted, and then the database is giving you back an object that you return out. You know, whatever whatever technology you're using, that's equivalent to the entity framework that does that. So here's inserted student, but look, I am basically handing them one to another. It's like like my variable declarations is basically like reading the table of content for a book that you're reading, right? So you basically get to see, you know, how these are done. Okay, now I want a storage broker mock. So here is I storage broker. So it's my storage broker mock. And that's also my guy here is mock I storage broker dot class. It's not a class, it's an interface. So this is why this language is kind of a little bit messed up and then here's my i student service student service equals new student service super straightforward and then storage broker mock done great again i appreciate the fact that i don't have to say mock dot object like this like we do in c sharp this is pretty cool okay now let's let's set up our expectations right so i'm basically saying uh uh, uh when Right, uh, storage broker mock dot input student with input student insert student with input student then return then return and then inserted students. So you see how the language here is much better, right? So I'm passing input student and now I get in inserted inserted student. So the language here is very very important. Go back to the standard, read how the DNA of the language that you're using will help you debug your system. You know, the standard mostly is about building systems that are maintainable by design, right? Like you're thinking first about what happens to that system before you go and say, oh, happy path, let's move some data around and, and celebrate and get whatever we want, you know, a pizza or something. So, okay, so here's student, you know, this is your actual student. Uh, and then here's my student service. Ideally, you would declare those in some before or after, you know, uh, don't, don't declare your services and, and brokers in, in, in that realm. That That's kind of weird. Okay, student service, add student. And why is this guy tripping unhandled exception? Oh, this guy is asking you to add in the exception to your method itself. You know, I guess temporarily until until we change that. That I don't like, right? That's That's dumb. So now it's telling me, hey, propagate that up because you're calling this method. But but we'll get back to this part. We'll get rid of it very soon. Now, uh, I want to go and say assert equals. And I want to go and say expected student should be equivalent to actual student. Like that. So that's one. And then the other thing is I want to verify that my storage broker mock has been called times once, right, with insert student with input student. I also want to verify 
verify no other interaction. This is the this is the equivalent to verify no other calls basically in in mock with the queue. Okay, let's run these tests and see what happens. This should fail. There you go. I have a failure. By the way, this piece that says illegal access operations in future release or whatever that is, I think that's something related to Makito and you know illegal access warrant to enable warnings. That that part here, if you're using Java every day, that's for you to look at. The one I care about is that it's saying operation not supported exception. Right. So operation not, not supported exception, meaning that my test failed. Great. Love it. Now let's make that test driven because now you have a failing test that have certain expectations. Now let's go to the method itself and implement it. Right. So I'm going to go here and say, oh, wow, it added it to the interface, too. That's crazy. OK, so let's go here, which is great. Right. Like I said to you, this is a huge advantage. Now I'm going to throw this away. And then I'm going to go here and say, um, this dot storage broker insert student with student like this so that should take care of this right uh why is this guy angry because we need to say return you remember in in scala you didn't have to say return in kotlin you still had to say return it depends on the language that you're working with and why you're working with it this way and all that okay great so we have this it's it's really cool that you're actually like um it's oh i see why now it's saying override because your interface is giving you a a basic implementation right i'm still thinking c sharp coming from the background is even c sharp now is giving you a default implementation i don't know why i don't like that decision but it it is what it is uh let's go back to our services here and our tests here and then i guess we don't need that guy anymore because we took care of it Although that, like, realistically, real-life applications, we totally should, uh, y you know, if, if, if you read the standard, you'll see that you have to throw exceptions, validations, dependencies, and service exceptions, and so on. But now you have this implementation that should basically run like a charm. Let's see here. There you go. So this is passing. The test itself is passing, but there's this, these warnings that are coming from Makito that I really, I don't... I don't care about too much. That's pretty much it. That's Java for you. You know, uh, super straightforward. Um, not a whole lot of difference between it and C sharp. Some people say C sharp is Java done right, right? Some people say that. Uh, some others say, you know, Java is just never going to die. Like it lives now into so many different enterprise applications that, you know, it's just going to be there forever. Like now a lot of systems, schools, colleges, they have it a part of their curriculum and criteria for you to learn with Java and it's a great language it's it's the reason why there's a lot of other languages it's, it inspired a lot of other languages James Gosling said that he built Java to convince a bunch of C and C++ developers to you know move away from having to manage memory and allocations and all that kind of stuff and now there's this trend of rust that's trying to pull away C and C++ developers into a different direction even someone like you know Linus Torvalds and you know big names in the industry are trying to go into that direction that's a story for another day when we start talking about Rust and how to implement, you know, standard compliant systems in in Rust. OK, now let's push this just for people to kind of, you know, uh, go back to it. So this is standard. This is, this is uh, standard Java. And uh, description, a, a, a demo app to uh, an app. OK, an example example to demonstrate implementing the standard in Java here we go and we don't need all the idea stuff we don't need all the lib stuff all these binaries the things that like don't ship that stuff with your code that's really bad but you definitely want to ship the references and all that so all of these are out. We don't care about these. And then the rest here is perfect. Initial commit, add, add, add and push. Voila, gone. So now if I go on to a web page, I should be able to see Java right here. I love that I get to see all the different, oh, you can't see it. 
uh how to, yeah there you go so you get to see every language has its own kind of color uh very unique on github that's pretty cool yeah so that's that's pretty much it uh, you know the standard you know helps engineers everywhere to kind of uh, uh, understand where they're no matter how big your code base is it always goes down to these three things you know dependencies purposes and exposures and then from there you get to kind of understand the different realms and different complexities uh, uh, I've used the standard to build over uh, 49 different uh, massive enterprise systems uh, in so many different disciplines from uh, finance to uh, uh, you know the grower uh, kind of agriculture to marketing and now with Microsoft you know you'll see some open source projects are following the standard you know and my own open source projects and you know everywhere else and you know if you want to learn more about the standard you know please join our standard community on discord you'll see the link uh, in the description of this video and I hope you found this a little bit uh, interesting maybe if you're a seasoned Java developer you had a little bit of uh, laughs and chuckles over my uh, you know pure ignorance with the language uh, but uh, you know other than that I hope you find something inspiring uh, and something useful in it if you have any questions comments concerns please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section and don't forget to like and subscribe thank you so much for watching I'll see you in another video take care